Hey there Unity devs and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at singletons in Unity. We'll guide you on how to maintain order in your Unity universe and ensure there's just one of each essential element. So let's bring harmony to your Unity game world and say goodbye to the game object frenzy. Click that subscribe button and let's get started. So here I am in Unity, just 2022, this will work in probably all versions of Unity. And I've got a blank scene. I'm just going to right click and go create empty and we'll just call this game manager. Let's pretend we've made a game and we want a game manager that's going to hold important things such as our player score for example. And on this game manager we're going to put our script which is our game manager script. I'll go ahead and right click and go create a new C sharp script. I'm going to call this game manager. You can literally call this whatever you want. It could be like game controller, game manager and that's going to compile that script. Unity has some kind of like reserved icons if you like and it recognizes that I've made like a game manager and it's changed the uh, little icon there from a script little icon to a cog. And that doesn't change the fact that this is still a script it's just it's just recognized that and given it a special little icon so I can still go ahead and drag and drop that onto my game manager I Can go ahead and double click and open it up in Visual Studio. To make this a singleton so there's only one of it in our game we can go ahead and remove these because at the moment we don't need them. And the most basic implementation of a singleton would be to go public, static, game manager, and we'll just go ahead and call this instance. And this is going to be a property so we can get it and we can set it but privately. So this line is just saying that we're going to create a static instance of our game manager. And then in our awake method, you would need to assign this script this class to our instance but first of all we would need to check that one doesn't already exist in the scene so we would do that by using an if statement and having a look to see that if our instance is not equal to null and that the instance of our game manager isn't already this instance of the class in our scene then we would go ahead and destroy this object because we don't want more than one instance of our game manager class. When I say instance, I mean copy of the game manager. So by saying if instance is, e is not equal to null, if this comes back as true, that means there's already a game manager in the in the scene somewhere because we've assigned instance here and it's a, a type game manager. So it's looking for a game manager in our scene already and it is not this copy of it then we'll go ahead and destroy this new copy that's trying to be added. But if there's no game manager detective, if, if there's no instance of that class, we need to set this instance that we're trying to create as the game manager. So we would just say this. So this instance of the class that's running in our game, it will then be assigned to this. So we would be able to use this in a different script to get access to the game manager. And to show you what I mean by having easy access to it, let's just go back to our game a second. Let's do something so we can see in the scene. So if I go ahead and create a sphere, and let's say this sphere was like a pickup or something, and the player ran into it, blah, blah, blah. Um, we could have a script on here that was maybe called like pickup or something. So drag and drop that onto our sphere. And then we double click it in uh, Visual Studio. So this would be sitting on like a coin or something you collect and say you had a method that got called because you the players collided with it and that method was like public void player collectible this could be anything you could get you could access the let's say the player ran into this object you could then you then want to increment a score that you had in the game manager so we could go ahead and type public in score for example and then in our pickup script, once our player ran into that collectible object, this pickup doesn't know that our game manager exists at the moment. And normally you'd have to do something like public game manager, game manager, and then in the inspector, you would have to then manually hook up that variable to remember to drag and drop it in the inspector so that the pickup knew what the game manager was. But you don't want to be doing that. If you've got thousands of pickups in your game, you don't want to be doing that for every single one of them. But because we've got a singleton, and we know that only one of these game managers exists in the scene, then we know that we want to get access to the player score in that game manager. So all we would need to do is type game manager dot instance, and then we can access the player score component plus equals 10. 
So we're getting we're looking for the instance of the game manager. Only one of those was existing in our scene, and then we could increment the player score. But the core purpose of this tutorial is to show you other ways to create this singleton. Because although this is you could just go ahead and copy paste this. Let's imagine we had several different managers, which is quite common in a game. You might have like an audio manager, you might have a player manager, you could have like an analytics manager, and all of these, you only really want one of your managers in the scene, you don't want more than one because you don't, we don't want like two instances of the game manager and each one has got its own player score because that just gets confusing. So you don't want to be typing this out every time you want to create a singleton. So there is a way to be more efficient with our code where we could put all this into a class and just inherit from that class to create a singleton more effectively and save you time in your game. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. So the first thing on the list is to create another script and we're going to go to create C sharp scripts and we're going to call this singleton creator just to keep the naming simple. I'll go ahead and enter on that and let that compile. Now we're not going to put this on a game object and I'll explain why in a second, but what we're going to do is go straight ahead and double click it to open it up in Visual Studio. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the start and update and we are going to make this an abstract class. This means that this class is intended to be a base class for other classes. It's not actually going to sit on a game object in our game, but other classes are going to inherit from it. And in our case, it's going to be whenever we need a singleton created. And then after a singleton creator, we're going to use angled brackets and put a T inside. And we're going to use generics here. So after the mono behavior, we can say where T is a mono behavior. The T here represents a placeholder for a data type. And it's a great way to make the class or method more flexible and reusable by allowing the user to specify the actual data type when they use or instantiate this class or method. So the T is a generic type parameter. This could be anything, this T and is a convention. And when we use this, we're effectively saying that in that class or method declaration, it means that it can work with any data type. The mono behavior section here is what we would normally see in our scripts and it can be attached to game objects in the scene. And we, where we have where T dash mono behavior, it's providing like a constraint on T that specifies whatever type T is, it must also derive from mono behavior. By putting this in here, We've defined a public abstract class that can be used in Unity and it's generic. So it'll work with different types and ensures that all the generic types type T is or derives from mono behavior. So this class is going to be used as a base class for creating singleton patterns in Unity. Next up, we can start looking at some stuff that's a little bit more familiar. So we can start implementing our singleton. So we can say public static T and then we've got our old familiar instance and we can get it and we can set it but privately. We're going to use our awake method to assign the instance. So because this is an abstract class, we're going to use protected virtual void, not coid, void awake. So making it virtual allows it to be overridden by any classes that are deriving from the singleton creator. And then here we would check for our instance as normal. So if instance is not equal to null and instance not equal to this. So if it finds an instance of the singleton that we create in the scene already, and it's not this one that we're looking at, then we can go ahead and we can we can write a message to the console. So we can say debug and we put log warning. We can say trying to create a duplicate singleton instance. And we can go ahead and destroy the game object. But if it's not, if we don't have our instance assigned, then we can go ahead and make T our instance. We can say this as T. And then what we can do, if you wanted to keep it nice and neat when we've um, stopped our game, we can use another virtual method and we use the on application quit. Need a curly brace in there. And I've got too many curly braces. There we go. Nice and neat again. So on our when we quit our application, we want to make sure that our instance is equal to null and we can destroy the game object. But what about if we want to have that singleton move between scenes? Well, we can cater for that too here. So we can create a different method and we can call it protected abstract class. 
and it's going to be we'll call this singleton creator persistent so this is going to move allow us to create a, a singleton that goes between scenes and here we're going to say t derived and it's going to inherit from our singleton creator which is that class above that we've just written and here we can put t derived and we need to specify that where t derived is also mono behavior it's inheriting from the class we just wrote so we're borrowing all that functionality but we're going to override the awake method so we can say protected override void awake before we call the base awake we're going to say if the instance not equal to null and destroy the game object because we've already got one instance of our singleton in the scene and then we can go ahead and return otherwise we can then say don't destroy on load and then game object that's going to make then it's going to call the base awake and it goes back up here and does all these little bits but it makes sure that we don't destroy our game object when we load between scenes so let's zoom out a little bit so you can see it all on the screen what we've done is we've defined a class singleton persistent that extends this abstract class singleton creator our awake method checks for existing instances and destroys the current game object if one is found and then it goes ahead and marks the game object as persistent between scenes so we can go ahead and save that now in our game manager we no longer need all this code so we can go ahead and delete it what we can do is we can specify that we want to inherit rather than inherit from mono behavior we want to inherit from our singleton creator and we're going to pass it the game manager we'll go ahead and save that and if you remember in our pickup we had our game manager instance dot score so our pickup would still work we could just create uh, an int here which would need to be public int score equals zero so you can see here we put our score in there just so our pickup now works and with our game manager we're inheriting from our singleton creator and we're passing it the game manager which will then create a singleton out of our game manager so in our game manager what we could do actually let's write a method called public void let's call it debug score and when this method's called all we're going to do is write a debug to the console so we'll say debug.log score equals and we'll say score we'll save that and then in our pickup after we've assigned our score let's go ahead and display it so we can say game manager dot instance dot debug score which is a method we just created and we'll call this method on start so we'll say void start we could move we could cut and paste all this but um we can just call that method that we rip which is player collectible so on start our game's going to call player collectible just pretend like we run into it or something and then in player collectible we, ass we assign our score to the game manager and then we debug it all accessing this singleton so we'll go ahead and press play look at our console there we go we've got score equals 10. so in our game manager we haven't got all the all the singleton code in here we've extracted it all out and created an abstract class where we can very quickly create a singleton this is the code that's being run at the minute not the singleton creator persistent but this is this now here's where like the, the real power of it comes in if you're working on quite a large game because we can now very easily go to our projects you, can, you might want to create a different type of manager so we would go to create a new c-sharp script and we would call this audio manager we then put the audio manager onto our game object and double click it and then we go oh, oh we need a singleton and we're going to write all this all the singleton code out again well no you can just go ahead where it's got mono behavior just take that out and go singleton creator i'm going to pass the audio manager and that's a singleton so if i wanted to access my audio manager from any anywhere like i wanted to play an audio clip when um, I picked up the collectible, for example, I would go audio manager dot instance and access that method and play the clip. If I wanted to use the singleton persistent and I wanted that singleton to carry on through to another level, I would go singleton creator persistent. So as you can see here, it's not letting us access that singleton creator persistent class. So let's go back to our singleton creator. And what we've got at the moment is we've actually nested that class because I'm an idiot. So we can go ahead and highlight that entire protected abstract class, singleton creator persistent. We'll go ahead and cut it and we'll move it outside of our singleton creator class. You can see with our curly brackets and just paste it back in like so. 
And then we can go ahead and mark this as public. And I spelled persistent wrong. So uh, persistent. It's good to go over these errors as they come up in the video so you know what to look for when you're writing your own scripts. So we nested that inside that class before, but we've actually extracted it now. So this singleton creator persistent, still the same code, still works exactly the same. It's still inheriting from our singleton creator, but it's just going to make it so it's persistent between scenes. And then back in our audio manager, we can go ahead and start typing that out again. So you can see now we've got singleton creator persistent and we'll just pass it the audio manager to create that singleton that moves between scenes. So we can go ahead and save everything, go ahead and run. And then in our, in our don't destroy on load, we should see our audio manager pop in there. So if you click it there, it goes. So we've got our um, singleton of our audio manager that we can access and move between scenes and our game manager sitting there too um, with our pickup accessing the score element of it. So really quick now to make persistent singletons between scenes and also just to create singletons without having to write all these lines of code. Every time we want to create a singleton, it's all in one place, easy to adapt and change. We've seen how to create a singleton and how to use the code more effectively to very quickly create new ones. And while singletons can be useful, they can come with some disadvantages. So singletons can introduce a global state to our application, making it accessible from any part of the code, uh, which can lead to tight coupling between different components and make it harder to understand and maintain the code. It can be a little tricky to write unit tests in isolation. So tests might be affected by the state of the singleton and it can be difficult to mock or replace the singleton during testing. You can also run into concurrency issues. So in multi-threaded environments, singletons can introduce uh, concurrency issues where multiple threads might attempt to initialize or access the singleton simultaneously. You might find it hard when you first run your game because you're accessing a lot of different singletons when you first run. The order in which those are initializing might become a bit of a problem. So if one singleton relies on another singleton to be initialized, managing the order of when they start becomes a bit complex and can be a bit error prone. And there's a massive risk of overuse and misuse as well, where it's very quick to create a singleton as a quick solution to share data between components. And this can result in a less modular and maintainable code base. But despite these disadvantages, singletons can still be appropriate in certain situations. It's crucial to consider the specific needs of your game and whether a singleton is the best pattern to use in that case. I think in many cases, alternate design patterns can often lead to a better foundation in your project, such as dependency injection or event-driven architectures. And those can be used to mitigate some of those drawbacks I spoke about earlier. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I appreciate it. it's a bit of a long one and a bit of a technical one, but great to have a look at some programming patterns that should hopefully help you along your game journey. Thanks very much, and I'll see you in the next one.